Well, it's been a few busy days with a lot of poker involved, and I'm gonna try to include it all in one video without making this like an hour long. Right, so this is Hermosa Beach behind me. It's about 10 minutes or maybe 15 from the Hustler Casino, which is the setting for today's video. I've spent the last two and a half days or so over there at the Hustler. The first day was all about that 5-5 meetup game that I mentioned. The second day, last night, I played 10-20 on the live stream. And tonight is the grand finale, if you will, where I'm gonna be playing 25-50, probably 25-50-100, also on the live stream. Let's start things off with that 5-5 meetup game a couple of nights ago. All right guys, here we go. Starting things off with some 5-5 five five No Limit. This was a meetup game hosted by myself and Rampage. And we started things off with Jack-10 suited. I open up the action at 20 bucks and only the player on my left calls. The flop comes Ace-Queen-6, giving me a straight draw, but not much else. However, this is a board where I could have some strong stuff, so I continue with a $15 bet and he calls. The turn is as good as it gets. The King of Hearts, giving me a very disguised straight, this time I size up to 125 and once again my opponent makes the call. It seems like he's got a non-believing ace, perhaps two pair, so a great situation developing here. However, the river changes that because it pairs the king, meaning I could be losing to a full house now, but that's really unlikely considering that pocket aces, pocket queens, and ace king would have re-raced before the flop. Sure, he could have pocket sixes, but if that's the case, he can have all my chips. I decide to move all in for my remaining 700, and yeah, it's a big bet compared to the pot, but these people at my meetup games seem to think I'm always bluffing, so might as well take advantage. Anyway, my opponent doesn't snap call, which is good, but after a minute or two, he does decide on a call. I turn it over, and we lose to pocket sixes. So yeah, not the best start I've ever had. Shortly after, there's a limper in early position before the button makes it $25. I look down at pocket nines in the small blind and bump it up to $125, and then the action folds back around to the button. He doesn't think too long before ripping in all of his chips, totaling around $500. I'm certainly not folding for that price, so I make the call and turn over the nines. We're off to a run out which doesn't look too great with a queen and a king out there, but somehow my opponent just mucks his hand. So I'm not super sure what we were up against, but that's fine. I'll take it. Later on, I open King-5 suited to 30 in a straddled pot, and only the button makes the call. Heads up to a flop of Jack-4-3 with two spades. I bet 40, and he calls. The turn is beautiful. The three of spades improving me from a flush draw to a flush period. So this time I bet $110, and the button makes the call once again. So things are looking good until the river double pairs the board with the jack of diamonds. I feel like my opponent could very easily have a jack given how this hand has played out. So this time I check it over to him and once he bets $250, I let it go. All right, here's the biggest hand of the night. Unfortunately, I didn't start filming until the flop, so bear with me. I get dealt queen 10 offsuit in the straddle, late position opens to 60, button and big blind call and I call as well. The flop comes queen 10 6, all diamonds. I check, the preflop raiser bets $75, button and big blind both fold, and now it's back on me. I feel like calling makes the most sense here, but I decide to raise it up to 300, mostly because it's a meetup game, I expect to get called lightly, and I've had a few drinks. What I did not expect, however, was another raise, which is exactly what my opponent does, all the way up to $850. We each started the hand with around 2,500, so still plenty of money left to play for, and I'm not here to make tight folds. So I make the call, and we got a big pot building here. The turn changes nothing, the five of clubs. I check it over, and this time he announces all in for his remaining 1,500 or so. Well, not much of a decision now. If he's got me beat, so be it. I make the call, and we see the seven of spades on the river. I'm not expecting to win this hand super often, but my opponent says, you got it, I missed. So I happily turn it over, and we end up taking down a pretty sizable pot to top off the night. Right, 
So considering that that was like a five or six hour session, you guys can probably tell I didn't really pick up too many cards. I only played a few interesting hands, but overall can't complain because I was in for, I don't know how much, you'll see right here, but I did end up winning around seven or 800 bucks. Not bad for such a fun night. Moving along, that brings us to the second stop on today's plans, which was last night's session. Like I said, 10, 20, no limit with a $20 big blind Annie, pretty big game. And of course I played some interesting hands, so let's get to it. Okay guys, back at it, this time 10, 20, no limit with a $20 ante from the big blind. And I waste no time getting involved, literally the first shuffle of the stream. I pick up pocket kings. There's two limpers before the button makes it 120. I bump it up to 600 from the big blind and only the button makes the call. Heads up to a flop of 10, seven, three rainbow. I think in this spot I should mostly be betting, but this time I decide to get sneaky and check it. The button checks back and we see a six on the turn. Now I do go for a bet of $1,400 and my opponent makes the call. He's only got around 3,000 left, which is less than what's in the pot. For that reason, I'm planning on moving all in on pretty much any river card and the 10 of clubs is no exception. I mean, sure, sometimes we'll be up against trips or a full house, but there's still plenty of value to get from non-believing pairs that think I'm bluffing after checking the flop. Sadly, this time it doesn't work out as we're up against queen 10. Once again, a rough start to the session. So I add on some more chips and quickly find myself in a similar situation. There's a raise from that same player and I look down at his suited ace in position. I choose to re-raise this hand and once again, he makes the call. So we go heads up to another flop. This one is queen jack three with two hearts, giving me the nut flush draw and one over card. He checks, I bet small and he calls. The turn brings no help, the five of diamonds. This time when he checks, I don't hate the idea of continuing to bluff, but I have some showdown value against draws and I don't think he's folding a queen or even a jack for that matter. So I just check back and take a free card, which is not a good one. The king of clubs improving a few hands that I was still beating like king 10 or 10 nine. For that reason, when he bets a thousand, I just fold right away. In the next one, action folds all the way around to the small blind somehow who limps into my big blind. I'm happy to raise a variety of hands in this situation, including any ace, so I make it 200 and he calls. Heads up to a flop of 854 with two hearts. This board is usually gonna be much better for him than me, so I just check it back and we turn a pair of sixes. This time the small blind leads for 170 and yeah, I mean, I lose to a ton of stuff here, but I'm not fully convinced yet, so I make the call and we see an offsuit 10 on the river. The small blind continues betting though, this time $570, and now I'm not sure what to do. On one hand, we lose versus a bunch of stuff, including any seven, which he could easily have after limping from the small blind. But on the other hand, he could just be bluffing with random hands because he has no other way to win the pot. <sighs> decisions, decisions. How does a six feel any good here? And Mariano is really considering calling. Sonny has exactly the kind of hand that you'd want to be calling, which is Broadway cards that just never connected. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too bad. Nice fold. Nice fold. A little salt from Sonny. Oh, he's going to show his cards. In the end, I felt like a six would almost never be the best hand, but as you can see, I was dead wrong, and it was a nice play from my opponent. Don't worry, the close decisions don't end there. In this next one, the straddle is on, there's a few limpers, and then I make it 300 with ace-10 suited from the small blind. The cutoff and button both call, and we go to a flop of ace-2-3 all hearts. Having top pair on a sketchy board and being out of position versus two players, I decide to check it, and now the cutoff bets $440. The button decides to then move all in for $2,600 into a $900 pot. Action is back to me and facing a bet plus an all in. I'm not really in love with a mediocre top pair here, especially with a $13,000 stack left to act behind me. However, things get interesting now because the cutoff folds out of turn before I have a chance to act. So his hand is now dead and all I've got left to worry about is the all-in from the button. Okay, so what does he have? 
Hands that I could beat are the random bluffs with the King of Hearts and smaller aces, I guess. But I think that's unlikely seeing as I'm holding one and he probably wouldn't play that in this fashion. Now, hands that I lose to include flushes, straights, two pair, bigger aces if he limped in with those. So quite a few things. And once again, it's a tough decision. He, he's right about that. That this changes the calculus so much because... He doesn't have to worry. And remember, Sonny was the initial better. In the end, I think a fold here makes the most sense. I just don't beat too many hands, and even if he is bluffing with the King of Hearts, we're not in amazing shape. On top of that, he jammed all in after a player bet, which looks even stronger to me. So... I end up folding the best hand, which is annoying, but I think the logic is sound even if the results don't reflect it this time. Moving along to the last super fun hand of this session, there's a $100 straddle, two players limp in, and I race to 500 with queen 10 suited. We get called by the big blind, the straddler, and one of the limpers, so four of us going to a flop of 10-8-3 rainbow. Looks good to me, so I continue with another bet of 500, but the big blind disagrees and instead makes it $1,500. Both other players fold, and now it's back to me. This is already an uncomfortable spot for two reasons. One is there's not that many bluffs available on this board. And two, he's raising with two other players that naturally checked it over to me since I was the preflop raiser, and they could easily have something too. So yeah, this raise feels pretty strong. And honestly, I wouldn't hate just folding right here on the flop, but I have position and some potential turn cards like a queen or a heart could help me out. So I make the call, but the turn is a six, and this time when he bets, I release my cards right away. That was the last interesting hand of this session, and in case y'all didn't notice, I didn't win any big pots. I guess that's just how it goes sometimes. Right, so... That was a somewhat forgettable session for me. As you guys could tell, I didn't really pick up too many hands. I never won a huge pot, didn't run very well, didn't exactly play very well. And when all those things happen, you're probably not gonna win some money. And that was the case for myself. Although I did end up playing like three or four hours past the stream ending and only lost around $6,000. Now, of course, that's still a bunch of money, but considering the size of the game and the fact that I was stuck like over 10K at one point, not too bad. Anyway, all that being covered, let's talk about tonight. It's a $25.50 with a $50 big blind ante, no maximum buy-in. It goes without saying that that's a pretty big game, at least for me. One that I've been looking forward to for a few days now, and I really just hope that I'm not super card dead and I don't end up having another somewhat boring night like last night was. But even if that's the case, at the very least, I'll get my ass kicked finally and it'll be good content. So there's a silver lining. Anyway, that session's not for another two or three hours. So for now, I'm gonna chill out at the beach, maybe get some lunch. You guys don't have to wait though. Let's fast forward to the Hustler where I'm gonna be playing some high stakes in the living. Let's go. Alright everyone, here it is, the third and final session of today's vlog. 25-50-100 with a $50 big blind ante and no maximum buy-in. In the first interesting hand, action folds to me in the small blind and I look down at ace-5 offsuit. The straddle was forgotten this hand, so I make it 150 and the big blind makes the call. Heads up to a flop of 10-6-4 rainbow. I bet 300 and he calls. The turn is a deuce, giving me a straight draw. This time I check it and now he fires out for $600. I've played with this player before and I've seen him do this thing a lot where he floats the flop and bluffs the turn or the river, which I decided to try and combat here with a check raise to 2000. Luckily that's exactly what he was up to and we got a fold versus a better ace high. Good start to the night. Next I open 10-9 suited to 300 before Ethan raises in late position to 1000. 
The big blind decides to call the 1000, and when it gets to me, I gladly make the call as well. Three ways to a decent flop, giving me middle pair, but everyone checks it. The turn pairs the top card, which is great, but the big blind seems to agree with that because he leads out for $1,500. Well, I can't raise, can't fold, that just leaves one option, I make the call, and Ethan gets out of the way. Heads up to a blank on the river, the five of hearts. This time, the big blind slows down and checks it. I'm happy to just check back and get to showdown, and we end up winning versus ace-king. Later on, I open pocket tens and get raised by Nick Vertucci to $1,300. Gets back to me, and I proceed with the call. The flop comes pretty good for pocket tens. It's eight, seven, deuce. I check, and he continues with another $1,300 bet. Against a smaller size, maybe a raise would be fine, but I continue with just a call and see a jack on the turn, which looks scary on the surface, but I doubt he would have one too often. Anyway, I check again, and this time he checks it back. The river comes in offsuit 9, giving me an unexpected straight out of nowhere. And this is a board where I could bet all sorts of hands, both for value and as a bluff. Pocket 10s is no exception, so I place a wager of $2,000, and now he raises to 7000 well, if he's got queen 10, good for him. I call, and we end up chopping versus king 10 of spades. So, actually an unfortunate river card. At this point, the game was playing bigger than I anticipated, so I add on an additional 30,000, and I'm now into the game for 50k. Anyway, this hand comes up where I open king 5 suited in early position, the button calls, and then the small blind makes it 1200. My hand is obviously not strong enough to call, but I think suited kings are good candidates to battle with, once in a blue moon. And this is going to be one of those times. I make it 3,300 to go. The button folds, but the small blind decides he's not done with it just yet. We go to a flop, which is amazing. King 7-5 with two hearts, one diamond. Somehow this mediocre hand is now a monster. But of course, I'm just going to continue with the small bet, just like I would with all my hands. The small blind makes the call, and we see a second diamond on the turn, giving me a flush draw to go along with it. He checks again, and this time I bet 6,000, hoping we're up against maybe ace-king or the nut flush draw. But sadly, my opponent folds right away, which makes sense with pocket queens, I think. In the next hand, the double straddle is on for 200, and I open ace-deuce of diamonds to 500. Three players make the call, so we go multi-way to a flop of jack-six-deuce with one diamond, Good board to start bluffing on, I think, so when it checks to me, I bet 1,000, and only the straddler comes along. The turn is a good one, the king of clubs, usually a card that will hit me more often than him, so this time when he checks, I size up to $4,000. I'm looking to get a fold from all medium pocket pairs, maybe even a jack. Also wouldn't mind if he folded a flush draw since that would include two overcards to my pair. Anyway, after some thought, he does end up folding, and we take down a nice little pot. The following hand is against none other than Rampage Poker himself. I open Queen Jack suited to 300, and then he makes it 1500 from the big blind. I make the call in position, and we flop top pair on Jack 6 3. He continues with a small bet, and I make the call. The turn is a 7, this time he checks it over to me, and in this situation, I would bet almost all my hands for a small size. Top pair is no exception, so I throw out $1500, and he makes the call. I'm expecting him to have some smaller pairs, maybe a stronger jack, or just ace high. So when the river comes in ace, I don't think there's much value in betting, so I just check it back and we end up winning versus pocket nines. Not the most eventful hand ever, but still nice to take it down. Anyway, shortly after this hand, the stream came to an end. I did play a few more hours, but like always, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. It's currently almost two in the morning and we finally stopped playing. I ended up playing for like three or four hours past the stream. Myself, Ethan, back here somewhere and a couple of the other guys. And things went very well. I was in for $50,000, ended up cashing out for just over 73. So a very good night, just over a $23,000 win. Most of that came after the stream, I think. I'm not exactly sure uh, how much I was up when the stream ended or even if I was up at all. Needless to say, an amazing result, one that I'm very happy with, especially considering that I lost like 6,000 last night. 
Overall, a successful three days here at The Hustler. Thank you guys, as always, for all the support. Thank you for watching. If you gave this video a thumbs up, I really appreciate it, especially these multi-day ones take a long time to edit, so uh, that helps me out, helps the channel continue to grow. Until next time, guys, good luck at the tables. Peace.